How are you doing today, folks? Oh my goodness, I'm looking out the window. The skies are blue, the grass is green, life is good. I'm, I'm feeling the energy. How about you? Whereabouts are you at this moment in time? Are you in the car? Are you perhaps out for a run? You know where I listen to a lot of my podcasts? This is bordering on TMI. I listen to a lot of my podcasts in the shower. I've got a little portable shower speaker. It's waterproof, so they claim. I've never really tested that. And I hook it over the edge. My wife hates it because it reverbs in the shower and then it leaks out. And then she doesn't, not a fan necessarily of all the shows I listen to. Oh, married life, eh? Relationships. That's what they all are. Our guest today, whom you're going to meet shortly, I learned as we were prepping, is married to a fine Bulgarian woman whom he met on Match.com. And they've been married, he thinks, 17 years. So I hope that she's not listening. Here's the word he thinks. But he is an original case story of how you can use, you know, the world of online to physically establish connections and rapport. And in his case, love and everlasting relationships. That's fantastic. I was, um, I had a conversation the other day that I thought might be good for the show. I was talking to an individual. It was a good conversation. The individual was not a salesperson. They were actually a marketer, young marketer. And they were poking and prodding and kind of, you know, looking for some mentorship. I have a lot of respect. You can see raw talent sometimes, right? You can just like see raw talent. You just go, oh man, if, you know, this, this individual is going to be a rock star in five years. They're just like pff, brilliant. And, and this young lad was just that. But we got into the whole conversation about top of funnel. Top of funnel, or, you know, as you put in the sales parlance, you know, the beginning of the buyer's journey. And uh, and he was lamenting, you know, he's like, Daryl, you know, we look at you, like you, like you're, you're not just a marketing guy, you understand the whole thing, but you're like a sales guy too. And you spend all this time talking about sales. I'm almost, conf you know, I almost feel like, you know, I look at you, like that's where I want to be. And I'm so far back. And I and all I know, I'm just the inbound guy. I'm just a social media guy. And I said, dude, at your age, to be known as the inbound guy, the social media guy, I would have killed to have that reputation. See, what you don't understand is the start of a conversation is the most critical aspect in the pursuit of a sale. How you start a conversation, how you engage a conversation, how, how you find a conversation is what dictates the success. If I say something wrong, if I don't reach out correctly, the conversation never takes place and you may ultimately buy, you know, your prospect may buy from somebody else and that's bad. Um, if I say something that offends you, if I say something that is off-putting, if I say something that is offensive, if I say something that conveys, I don't know what I'm talking about, then warning signs go off, right? Whoop, 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 danger, 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 Will Robinson, if you're a Lost in Space fan from the 60s. And by the way, the 90s remake with La Matt LeBlanc was not good, just we're clearing that one. And the modern one on Netflix was good, but short-lived. So um, that's the scoop about uh, the importance of, of communication. But then I was also talking to this young man about how critical it is that your messaging changes as you develop through the funnel. And I can't say that enough. Your messaging changes as you move through the funnel. And that's just not you as a salesperson or a marketer, but it's also as you change roles, right? So the way a marketer speaks to a prospect is going to be different than the way a sales development rep speaks to a prospect than the way an account executive speaks. And you have to recognize that because you all have your roles. Um, so, but here's the thing, even though it's different and you have different roles, you all have to work together in harmony, three-part harmony. And that's what we call the customer experience. So that the, the experience feels fluid and natural that I'm moving through the funnel from the top to you, to them. Uh, that's when sales and marketing are aligned, but it all comes back to how you talk to your prospect. And... You know, I mentioned this whole concept of, of, you know, the marketer passing off to the SDR. And of course, for those who don't know, the premise of an SDR began when the very lauded uh, Aaron Ross wrote the book, Predictable Revenue. He was the individual who said, these are the roles. 
and everybody transitioned to those roles. And out of that shift came a whole new approach to how we sell. And that's been especially rampant in high tech, prolifically rampant in the SaaS world, but not nearly as rampant in other industries, say manufacturing or insurance. Which begs the question, is that the right approach or not, if not all the other industries picked it up? Is it du rigueur and that's why we pick it up? Uh, we copy each other, we say that must be the right way or not? I'm getting deep here. I'm talking messaging, I'm talking engagement, I'm talking sales and marketing alignment, I'm talking three-part harmony, I'm talking the roles and the structure. I'm bordering on what this show doesn't talk about, but I'm going to bring it all back. I'm going to bring it all back right now. The important part of that whole conversation was throughout the buyer's journey, you have to engage appropriately. You have to communicate appropriately. And I want to repeat this. The way a marketer talks is different than how a salesperson talks. And I'm going to stop there for a second because I think sometimes you folks miss that point. So what I did was I said, who is not only a sales training, advising rock star, but who is an individual who actually gets communications, is a communications expert? Because I want to tackle this topic today. I want to tackle what you might be doing wrong when it comes to your communications how that could be affecting your long-term career and success and what you need to know in very specific manners and methods to not make that mistake. So if you're wondering who I brought on today, let me kill that suspense because you know what? That's just the way I roll. Let me introduce to you Jeff Molander. Do you know Jeff? Jeff is the guy when it comes to communications edge. He can be found at jeffmolander.com. He's got a whole crew. I love his stuff. And what I like about Jeff specifically, beyond his charming good looks and his Bulgarian wife, is the fact that he's got, and this is going to sound almost geeky, he approaches things with an intellectualism that I don't see pervasive. And he's one of the few people that when he says something, I sit back and I go, hmm, because like peeling an onion, there's always more there. So today we're going to peel the onion with Jeff. Jeff, welcome to the show, my friend. How you doing, man? How you doing? Hey, I <laughs> calm down man. calm down i've only had one coffee i have listen i i wish i have all the energy that you have but i'm just kind of i'm, I'm humbled to be here frankly you're um and i'm really i've been looking forward to this for a while and i'm really glad to be here so oh, so when i was going through my pre 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 uh preamble <laughs> and by the way i just you know crew you guys listen to this every week i do this preamble and you guys are so good but i do have a question i want you to send me a private message feel free to make it make it anonymous how many of you fast forward like the first five minutes because you just want to get to the gas i'm just curious um hey, yeah they, they missed the whole part where you spilled the beans on my personal life yes I mean, see that's the point they're coming out and they're going i missed the reference to the bulgarian woman i don't understand that so see you shouldn't fast exactly. forward they don't, they don't, they're not here for that either, to be honest, but it was, it was surprising to me to hear you talk about it. So. See, we bring it all in here. We're crazy the way we're bringing all these little touch points. We humanize, man. It's about making a relationship. That's what we're talking about here. Um, you've got some really cool points of view on this topic. So, you know, I set the stage a little bit, but uh, you're much more direct sometimes. So I don't want to put words in your mouth, but... I've heard you say that you think sales development reps, business development reps, call them what you will, today are just glorified marketers. Is that a fair statement or, well, or, or what? No, my, my, our customers who have teams of SDRs and BDRs, uh, many of the sales team leaders, I'm talking about the account team leaders, are in war either silently or, or openly with the inside sales team, digital sales team, and they literally call them, um, our company will get in the middle of it and try to try to resolve this, that you guys are a bunch of glorified meeting setters, you know, virtual assistants, um, that we need you to be more, more than that. So yes, fair to say, and I'm not the only one. I mean, this is oftentimes a war that's going on quietly or openly within organizations. Can I 
um, take the pressure off of you for just one second and react to something that you said yes at the, at the onset listen um what's playing out with um the global crisis and where there's always going to be some sort of crisis there's there's the economy does this the economy does that. Every few years we see the same thing, right? Jobs are plentiful. Jobs are not plentiful. People are making money. People are struggling. Uh, unemployment, all these kind of things. In the world of, of sales, um, well, my, my, here's, here's my gem of wisdom unsolicited. Nobody asked me. But I noticed when I, by the time I was about 30, Daryl, I noticed that, and I was in marketing most of my life, but I noticed the first thing to get cut during the difficult times is marketing. Don't yeah. like that. Yeah, it is. Didn't, never like that. Second thing I noticed about marketing was my pay raise sucked. <laughs> so yes. third thing I found out about, I realized, I love, and I love marketing. You can't take me away from marketing. I love it. Can't do enough of it. The third thing I realized was it's not nearly as challenging as sales. This is why salespeople are paid an unusually, I mean, a lot of them, they pay more than doctors in many cases, lawyers, right? So I wanted some of that. I wanted I wanted to be challenged, and I wanted an un, uh, an, en an endless supply of um, an endless opportunity. You know, sky's the limit, and I didn't want to get cut. I wanted to become a valuable part of. I wanted to be valuable. I wanted to be a valuable part of a company. So what I'm seeing these days is are are when SDRs and BDRs are aligned with marketing, and we're seeing this play out right now. When the layoffs come, they don't lay off the men and women who have those relationships, those account executives who have those skills and those relationships, those people don't get laid off nearly as quickly and easily as those glorified appointment setters. And that gets back to our discussion, I think, today, which is skill set. What is your skill set? Account executives have a high level of communications capability when it comes to interacting with a client that uh, that uh, broadly speaking broadly not certainly it's not uh, this way everywhere some people some organizations are really empowering and upskilling their sdrs and bdrs and that is the future so but you don't want to be an you don't want to be a part of an expense item so marketing is an expense item that was the point i wanted to make don't be part of the expense item do you, do you want to be part of the expense no you want to be part of the growth engine so make make yourself ex so you're not expendable. And I want to hit up on that. You hit a couple couple really important things here, which is you made the point of saying the people who own the relationship are the ones who are going to be valuable in tough times. The client relationship, the client right. relationship, right? Or the prospect relationship. You know, the, you're in the middle of a sale right, right. And, and they truly value it. Right. And those who are just doing, for lack of a better word, commodity tasks. An appointment center. finding the hand raiser finding the hand raiser that can that that includes marketing Commodity. often as much as it does an sdr right. are the ones who are at risk of being um rift reduction in force laid off furloughed um to, uh, for the company to endure and survive through those tough times so now every sdr on this listen to this right now and your bdr listen to this right now is in panic mode because they're worried that you've just told them that A, they're a commodity, B, that they're a line item on a ledger <clears throat> that can be eliminated in tough times. And this 2020 has been a, you know, a series of tough times. So what I need you to do today is I need you to walk through and explain to me what the SDRs are doing that makes them a line item and how they should instead be approaching their job and the AEs can listen in and, and cherry pick all the ideas too so that they're not. Does that sound like a, a good deal to you? Sure, sure, absolutely. Okay, so what we're gonna do, kids, we're gonna go for a quick little break. When we come back, we're just gonna go, we're gonna hammer this guy, bam, 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 bam. And he's gonna give us gold nugget after gold nugget after gold nugget. You should get your pen out. So when I come back, you're ready, okay? And just sidebar, if you forget, if you don't have your pen, if you're out running for a jog, you're in the car, and you really shouldn't be draw, you know, writing and driving at the same time, at VanillaSoft.com, every single podcast is transcribed. You can just rip off the transcription. So there you go. We're done. We're going to be right back. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere.
Okay. Where do we start? Let's walk through the differences between what an SDR does today, because I think is what you're saying is what they're doing today is commodity. Tell no, me you what- you use that word. But that is I, exactly the word. That is the that word. Is, okay, no, and I know, yeah, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but that is a, a word. That's perfect. Tell me what they're doing and tell me what they should instead be doing. Does that work for you? Sure. Okay, so first things first. What's the first thing they're doing that they shouldn't be doing instead? What should they be doing? Go. Stop listening to marketing when it comes to formulating your outreach. Uh, also, stop going onto Google looking for hacks that everybody else is using because that's what Google does, right? Everybody's Googling cold email template, creative cold email template, uh, follow-up template, uh, how to respond to not interested. Everybody's doing that and everybody goes about two pages deep on Google and those are all the same sources of information. Many of them, um, and I'm and I'm going to stick my neck out here and you can slap me across the face, Daryl. Many of them are... Uh, our, our software companies yes, who, they provide, are. who provides, uh, you know, outstanding software tools to follow up with prospects. Yep. But you will find however, much stuff from me. So from this point forward, gentlemen and ladies, don't, Jeff Molander said it here, don't listen to Daryl Braille. Carry on, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I would never say such a thing. Uh, but I heard uh, him imply it, but carry on. It's all good. It's, I like no. where he's going because, I mean, in all the sincerity, I mean, I it's true. It, it is a hundred 200, 300% absolutely true. And everybody right now is giggling because you, you said they, you go a page or two deep and you stop. That's also true. So carry on. All right. So stop listening to marketing. Well, no. Stop and Googling the, hacks. The issue, the issue is that you're doing everything that everybody else is doing. And it's with regard to the software companies, they're just trying to help. However, in, in just trying to help, they're creating content. Everybody has to create content. So we create these, you know, these templates and we make these blog posts, the pro that, but they become problematic and, and everybody knows they're problematic. So when I say this to you, Daryl, I'm sure you're going, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can see that. Right. And other people are going, yeah, mm -hmm, I can see that that's a problem. I'm doing everything else that, that everybody else is doing. Right. So I sound the same. I look the same. Thing. Right. So don't do what everybody else is doing. The question then is well, what the hell do I do? Yes. Um, so the, the, what you do is you upskill yourself. And what you do is you under, start understanding that there is something to behind this. Um, so there are people like Beck Holland who talk about transactional analysis. There are people like me who talk about the different aspects of um, challenger selling, what's happening within the realm of psychologically speaking, right? And what are the what are the the differences, the key differences between sales copywriting and marketing copywriting as it relates to your scripts, as it relates to what you're sending in emails on LinkedIn, what your, your voicemail scripts, the big don't do is don't let your marketing team develop those and hand them to you. Um, and don't go onto Google and don't, you know, get all these other scripts sourced from elsewhere. So roll it all up to don't be a marketer. And we've, and again, this is very unconventional thinking, but, but we've spent the last 10 years or so hearing salespeople must become marketers. You have to own your own personal brand on LinkedIn, yada, yada, yada. This has been a complete disaster for the most part uh, and is more causing more problems than anything else. However, as you said, Daryl, the software industry in particular has been venture funded to the extent that um, SDRs and BDRs have become synonymous with marketing. They're a line item expense. So they are many times, not in all organizations, but in many organizations, underpaid under, and, and not trained in that and, and expected to learn from account executives who have absolutely no incentive to train them in many cases, not all cases, in many cases. So that and, and all the training burden is put on the, the account executive. Or, and then they're given crappy sales training as well, the SDR teams, uh, you know, sales training that's completely outdated that talks about using all these templates and stuff that doesn't work anymore. Okay, so you have just given me just a boatload of stuff here. I've been taking notes like a, like a madman. So this is what I've heard you say. I'm gonna recap for the audience. <clears throat> Quick and dirty, Jeff said, stop listening to marketers. Stop Googling the hacks, especially on a page or two and using the templates, the objection handling that everybody else is using. What I always say in that one is stop looking for a shortcut. 
Um, stop yep. being like everybody else because then you sound the same. You're, you're, you truly are a commodity. This is probably the most important thing I heard you say the whole time. You said upskill yourself. And we've had multiple podcast episodes where we say learning is earning, where you invest in your own skills development, right. you will earn more money. Uh, and by the way, and that means you pay for it. Yeah, if your employer will pay right. for it, great. But if they don't pay for it, you don't not do it. You, just like a musician buys their own instruments and a sports player, you know, buys their own gear until they finally, you know, make that million dollar paycheck, in which case they often still buy their own gear. You know, you invest in yourself. Uh, you said um, Beck Holland is all over this with her concept of transactional analysis, looking at the transaction itself and how people feel and how you interact to make that transaction happen. Jeff Mollner, the man himself here, is a huge advocate of challenger selling, the psychology of the sale. Uh, copywriting is probably one of the biggest areas where USDRs are actually messing up. You're actually being, um, you're either being like marketing, you're following marketing's advice, or you're letting marketing do the writing for you because you're just fine. It's a shortcut. If they'll do it, you'll take it. Um, the influence of venture companies, what Jeff didn't say, but what he was really saying was they follow a formula. Every time they invest in the company, they say thou shalt do this. And so therefore everybody's doing the same thing. And the last thing is, and this is probably the, this is the most like mind blowing. Yeah. They're looking at the, they'll, your boss will say, watch Joe or watch Sally because they're the kick-ass AEs, but the AEs themselves have absolutely no incentive to train you, which brings us back to upskill yourself. So that's, that's the, we just ripped the bandaid off there, kids. So now we're going to get into the, the issue. All right. I want to focus on some of the, um, the marketing aspects, right? Cause to me, what I'm hearing is a communication thing, a psychology thing, uh, shing. I, I don't know where shing comes from. I think the word is thing, but there we go. Don't say shing, say thing. Um, so marketers, I'll throw stuff out there and you tell me what marketers or what sales reps should or shouldn't do. A marketer, I will always ask in every single one of my campaigns I'll do with my team, I'll say in an email specifically, or even in a voicemail or a social media post, I'll say, where's the call to action? Should I have a call to action as, a, as an SDR when I'm reaching out? I mean, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm a marketer, I'm a commodity. Should I have a call to action? This is not about my answers. What I'm about to give are not about my opinion or my experience. These are the experience of our collective customers. We, are, uh, we operate an online community of people who come together and upskill themselves and learn about this stuff. They say, okay, Molander, if I don't, if I shouldn't have a call to action, which you shouldn't, uh, what should I do? So calls to action, no. Call, a call to action is a marketing construct. No surprise, that's what we see in the SDR, BDR emails are these, you know, um, looking forward to our, our weak words, first of all, uh, looking forward to hearing back from you. Are you interested in this? Uh, all these, you know, let's book a meeting. Here's my calendar link. All of this is an attempt to remove choice. It is not an attempt to empower the reader and give them the right to make a choice. These are attempts to remove choice. And that is, does not belong. And it, 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 this is what I'm getting at with the, sa with the sales mentality and the marketing mentality. Marketers are about pushing. We're pushing. We're talking about ourselves. Here's our customer list. Here's what I want. I'm going to be very clear with you about what I want. Right? That's what my subject line should be and my message should be very clear about what I want. Absolutely not true. So... I want to drill down on that for a second because everybody's going, if I don't have a call to action, how do I progress? Because we're always supposed to move for a continuance, right? Yep. Um, or the next stage. So if I don't have a call to action, how do I do that? And would I be fair in saying, you know, our marketer's job is, to, is you know, we're fishing and that's the worm. That's the hook, the call to action. Download this paper, you know, right. spend time with right. me. That's the bait. So we can, <clears throat> we can get a nibble. I always view sales as especially whether you're, and especially starts with the SDR is their job is to n not, we are, we did that. Marketing did that. Your job is to start, I say, help me understand your business. What pains are you having? This is what right, we right, see right. for people by Love. you. Human, human, human right. exactly. Human right. Not trying to push you into anything, just trying to have an assessment go on here. Yeah. Right. Cause I think about it. If I talk to my spouse or my kids or my friend and they said, you know, I, I say, how you doing? Uh, oh, what's the matter? And then you start having a, you ask some probing questions and then you go down a thread because it's human to human. Right. So I actually fully agree with you that 
marketers do do the you know the call to action, but not sales. Sales should be right. doing discovery, should be doing qualifications, should be should be establishing a relationship and asking those probing questions. I and I agree with you. Okay, so no call to action, mind blowing right away. Your mind there has changed. Everybody's going, what the hell do I do with this now? Okay, what about um, what about the tone? How about the use of persuasion? Uh, persuasive tone is all over the place, right? Um, just uh, you know using adjectives and adverbs. Look in how many times you're, you know, you're, it's clear. People always say to me, well, what do I write to try to persuade? You know, I, I need them to have a meeting with me, right? Um, I, need to, I need to build trust with them. I need to be appear credible. So what we do is we start talking about our customers. We start talking about um, our solution. We start talking about, re, you know, our Gartner, you know, uh, Gartner says this about us. Yeah. So we, we brag about ourselves. We try to, so it's like, think about going out on a first date for the very first time with someone who's sitting there trying to persuade you, right? Because that's what it is. That's what an SDR's job is, is to go on a first date, right? So if all, you know, here's what's in it for you. I'm going to be crystal clear about what's in it for you. You're not going to have any opportunity to become curious about me. I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell you, uh, I'm going to, uh, uh, go through this, um, uh, uh, what do they call it? AIDA, right? This this um, attention, create interest, and then desire, and then the call to action, right? I'm going to run you through this process. That's exactly what SDRs are doing in their emails. If you look at them and you analyze them, which is what we do, that's what we're doing, and that's what we've been told to do. And whether it was predictable revenue or whoever, um, this is the the course that we've been running on, which is a very templated, canned, persuasive. Uh, and there's a whole belief system. I have to earn their trust. I have to appear credible. I have to persuade them. I have to be very clear. And what I'm telling you is, you don't have to listen to me. You don't. But if you're wondering about what the better way to get someone's attention, spark their curiosity, that's the key, and, and, and earn that response, I can tell you that I've got, you know, we've got thousands of customers all over the planet that do this, that throw away this marketing mentality and start saying, okay, Molander, what do I do? Well, in a, in a nutshell, spark their curiosity. And there's different ways to go about doing that. But the first thing we've got to do is stop talking to them like a marketer and stop persuading them where the call to action, Daryl, to your point earlier, okay, if it's not a call to action, what the hell is it? It's sparking their curiosity and the call to action, making a statement, and you just let, leave them hanging. And the call to action is a provocation. Right? You've provoked them to look at something and go, I don't understand exactly what you're getting at, but that sounds really important. Can, can you take me a little bit further into that? I might, I, might, I might be interested in talking to you. So those are the type of reactions that a salesperson should be going for, from cold, of course. So or I was, even, even an, an existing relationship that you're going back to, right, to get a referral or something like that. So I love what you're saying here. The whole point of sales is, to me, you're the trusted advisor. You have something that I probably want, and you shouldn't have to do a hack to get my interest. You should educate and inform, ask some probing questions, inquire about me and my company and my goals and objectives. And if there's a fit there, fantastic. And if there's not, move on. And, and it's not, you're, you're right. You're not marketing, full stop. But you do right. need marketing for all those inbound leads. So you each have a role. And I wanna be clear about that because too many of you sales reps thinking that you're the cat's meow and marketing's just a bunch of hacks. The reason marketing gets cut and downturn is because they've got program spend. People are choosing, companies are choosing to not cut people, staff salaries. And they have the perception the sales drives revenue. Um, marketers would argue with that. That's another podcast episode. We won't go into that one. But, you know, if marketing's got a million dollar campaign program budget spend and I can cut that in half, I just saved $500,000, which means we as an employees get to keep our jobs longer. And that's why that happens. So you want to make sure you're not a commodity. You want to make sure the best way to do that is to own the relationship, to be that trusted advisor. If you want to become an AE, everything Jeff just said there is gold. Jeff, what you've done here is you've provoked now, everybody's left hanging. I know they're left hanging. They want to know more. You shared you have an online community. If I want to learn more about the community so I can continue understanding what you're getting at here, and I can not be a marketer, but I can be a trusted advisor, tell me about the community. You know, what's the web address? How can I learn more? Yep. Simple web address, and it's free to join the community. 
although you are actually not allowed into our forum, which is a paid opportunity, but uh, you are part of the community at the bronze. It's a bronze, silver, gold type of membership. And at bronze, it's free. And you've got some really outstanding uh, lessons available to you to teach you how to spark their curiosity. So it's not just us talking theory here, right? So uh, that's at uh, joinsparkacademy.com. Just go there and you'll see the different uh, bronze, silver, gold levels. But the really the, the important thing to remember here is that human being human beings value more what they ask for and they value less what you offer to them. That's what that's the whole construct that's going on in in outbound is that you know we're asking we're asking we're asking what if we didn't ask? What if we actually did something spark their curiosity to make them want to ask? Just reverse it. Okay, that's Jeff Molander. He's a pretty smart guy. I told you he was intelligent. He had the whole intellectualism about him. He's just rocked your world. You know where to go. Check it out. You'll know more. Follow him on LinkedIn. Follow him on all the social channels. That wraps another week. Jeff, thank you for joining us. My friends, we made it. We made it! Will I see you again next week? I hope so. My name is Daryl Prale. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.